C A R V Carver Bancorp. This one is trending. It's popping. I'm looking up the news on this thing. <clears throat> There's no news. <clears throat> the <laughs> the article that came up at the top of Google when I was searching for this is that Carver is a black owned uh, banking company, and maybe the Fed is supporting them, and maybe people are interested in investing in African American owned companies there's no news there's no news and some nonsense um about the skin color of some owners or something um i have no idea what's going on with this stock <laughs> i just <laughs> it's just trending and i want to take a look at it but what's the one to 15 split yeah i mean they're getting close enough to penny range to do a pretty big reverse split i mean it's been a little bit ugly, um, and uh, there, and there's no reason there's no reason for this. There's not like a big news blast or anything. This is crazy. From two to eight, eighteen. This is an insane move that makes no sense. Let me let me go look and see if I can find something else. Yeah, seriously, that's all I can find. It says buying black is the new, the, that's the news headline is buying black. Um, this stock has gone from, you know, $2 range to almost 20 bucks or above 20 um, because people want to buy a company that has African American owners. This makes no sense. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, generally with like a fake news blast, you expect it to kind of settle out and then you take a look to see if it has a bullish trend leading up to it. And this one doesn't. It has a bearish trend heading heading into that blast. So I don't even see a floor on this. Um, just, I guess, uh, let's look at some stuff that is kind of relevant. The yield curves, um, the yield curves are continuing to uh, to steepen, and so that's good for financials. And if we take a look at the XLF, it is, yeah, kind of. It's not falling. It's the uh, the announcement for the Fed to buy individual bonds should be good for banks because that's who they should be targeting with those purchases is banks and making sure the liquidity uh, for banks stays good. And I think that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to make sure that banks can stay liquid without just taking random blasts across huge sectors of the market. Um, you know, so they can probably print less money with a better effect on the banking sector. So uh, there is slightly okay news for the banking sector in terms of the yield curve and in terms of the Fed's policies this week. Looks okay for the, the financials and for specific financial companies that are black owned um but there's literally no news on that stock as to why it's blowing up and i can't imagine that it stays up there i mean i think that thing needs to reverse back out to there's uh, there's no support there's no um there's not even a target i mean it's just kind of you know has a floor around a dollar 50 or something and it just decreased to that, what is going on? It doesn't make any sense. This makes no sense. This makes no sense. This thing has to come back down. And usually, usually with these blasts, it'll settle higher than kind of where it started. So I mean, a generic guess, maybe four or five dollar area, not investment advice, but. But this is not even a news blast. I don't even know what's happening here. So maybe I'm missing maybe I'm missing the news, but I looked all over the place to see what's going on with this stock, and all I could find was black owned. That's what the news headlines say. And that is it just it just makes no sense. So as far as financials go, I mean I was looking at um Jeff Snyder's Twitter feed and there are issues right now with financials, trading, um, trading treasuries, and 
uh, getting liquidity of the U.S. banks are are having a couple of issues. Let's go. Let's do that. Let's go to Snyder's Twitter feed and take a look. All right. So this is Jeff Snyder. He works for Alhambra uh, Investments, and he's well. I mean, I guess he was the research analyst. I think he has a new title now. He's like chief investment officer or something like that. But he uh, he's the king of the euro dollar system. And when the euro dollar is contracting or doing crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, so they're just talking about a their euro dollar like university. They have a euro dollar university where you can learn about how the international banking system actually works. Uh, this is one of the best places uh, that you can go to learn about the euro dollar system, the international banking system. This is a joke about Portnoy, who's like crazy bullish on the market, and he's you know just going nuts. Um, yeah, okay, so he he's taking a look at the, the yield curve steepening here. This is the, the fives versus the thirties. And he's shown that the fives are just settling out low and the thirties are having just a tiny move up. And so it's a small steepening and it's a weakening. Um, the overall interest rates are getting weak, really weak. And, you know, we've seen that in the yield curve the past couple of weeks is close to zero. It's not very high, but it is steepening a little bit. And he's saying it's not uh, not a huge positive for the economy to have a yield curve that's low and weak and just steepening a little bit. Um, but it's not dropping into negatives right now. So it's not a big like deflationary indicator or something like that. Uh, and here's a chart. Yeah. So here's a big chart on the U.S. Um, the U.S. dollar liquidity situation um, showing that. U.S. banks are bidding really hard for uh, for central bank liquidity swaps. So this is like a last resort place to go for dollar liquidity and super high bids on this is not good. And this is domestic bank. This is domestic bank liquidity, not international banks. Um, so that's kind of the look right now is there's some kind of squeeze on domestic uh, bank liquidity. And I think that's what the I think that's what the specific bond buying announcement from the Fed is is regarding is the domestic bank liquidity issue that nobody knows is happening yet. But Jeff does and you do now. And so this is um, this is definitely something to take a look at uh, with regard to the financials. And um, yeah, and we'll see how that kind of develops if we get a, a domestic a domestic liquidity situation. Uh, and here's a look at at several larger economy kind of banks, uh, Bank of Canada, England, Bank of Japan, the EU, the Fed, the Swiss, Na Swiss National Bank, um, announcing coordinated action to enhance liquidity with uh, the U.S. dollar liquidity uh, swap line agreement. So the um, the swap lines are it's a direct agreement with the Fed and other central banks where banks can swap their currency directly with the Fed for U.S. dollars. And the Fed charges an interest rate uh, when they give dollars, you know, in this arrangement. And they're lowering the interest rates on the swap line. So that's more and more liquidity to all of these bigger international banks. Um, but it's only the banks that have positive swap lines that are allowed to get dollars this easily. And banks like China that U.S. won't give a swap line to are going to have a lot harder time getting dollars. And um, yeah, and so they're they're dropping the interest rates on the swap lines also. So this is lowered interest rates, and it's not it's uh, you know interest rates still seem to be trending down, but they're not pushing negative yet. And the swap line liquidity is really what has decreased the huge dollar crunch internationally. Um, but that's a that's an interesting thing to look at is. Um, they're continuing to decrease the swap line interest rates. So there is still an international liquidity squeeze that they're addressing. Yeah, and this is just more on the dollar swap. So um, he's just pointing out that if the Fed is stepping in and doing this activity in the international markets, that's stuff that the international banks are failing to do. And so this, the Fed has to kind of step in and do their, basically do their job. Although the Fed doesn't have the ability to assess risk like all the international banks do. They just have the ability to kind of pump money and kind of blindly shoot it <laughs> across across into all the international markets. 
Oh, just looking at the unemployment. Yeah, so the the big increase in employment was just <laughs> it was just it's still ridiculous. Like that's not an increase. It's just a smaller. Yeah, it, the unemployment rate's absolutely nuts. I mean, it just got like 1.2 million more unemployment claims this week. Um, so that number of positive jobs regain had a lot to do with uh, just like what you consider a lost or a gained job. Um, but the jobs lost is actually still high and maybe it's decreasing. Uh, we'll see how that continues. Um, yeah, companies are going out of business. And, oh yeah, this is layoffs. So the Great Recession, you know, just like this tiny little bump in layoffs. And this is what, you know, what happened. So, I mean, everyone knows the unemployment and the out of work people is absolutely insane. Like the unemployment numbers, even Jerome Powell says the unemployment numbers are, yeah, there's a couple way of calculating them, but like the actual number of people not working is monstrous. Yeah, so I guess that's, he has a ton of stuff about unemployment here. Uh, recently, but that was the big thing that I kind of wanted to point out. I guess was was this one, um, the uh, the central bank liquidity swaps is a really huge one, and uh, just talking about the U.S. banks right now uh, are are competing with the uh, the foreign banks uh, for for the dollar liquidity, which it's kind of surprising, I guess, but there, there's a liquidity squeeze right now in U.S. banks like this week, and that's something to keep an eye on. And the yield curve steepening, okay, like that's we'll see, we'll see how that develops. But um, as far as the yield curve and the interest rates and the bonds go, we want to see if the interest rates push down or not. And yeah, I think the Fed wants to, they want to let the yield curve steepen, and they want to buy corporate bonds instead. Because uh, that benefits the financials if they can have a steeper yield curve. That's uh, that's positive positive for financials. But as far as the Carver, this video is on the Carver uh, Bancorp. Uh, not it's not that positive <laughs> to get whatever 600% blast or something, and that stock makes no sense. So I would expect that thing reverses way back down to where it came from. I don't even get it. Maybe there's a news blast that I'm missing, but. Um, the 600% blast just because uh, there's some some racial something or another in the ownership of the company. I don't get, I don't get it. Um, I don't get it. But the steepening yield curve is is good for financials, even though that Jeff is saying like overall it's not that good. It is an improvement uh, for financials, something like the XLF. So for me, like I think like the Small caps like the Russell 2000 has a lot more risk than the XLF this week. And we'll see how the yield curve develops. But that's kind of the look. And Jeff Snyder's great. Go to uh, Eurodollar University. And they have a ton of videos. I think that, yeah, this is episode 13. Like You can spend a week looking at these videos and learning about how the international banking system actually works. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so that's... Carver and Carver and the the financials for this week, and we don't have the balance sheet yet. That's what I'm trying to get today. I keep refreshing to see if we can get the balance sheet numbers. But the last week, the balance sheet was almost dead flat. The Fed is talking about printing money, and they're not actually doing it. The balance sheet's flat. Uh, they're not printing money this week. Uh, that's a bunch of BS. And I want to see if it's flat again when we get the numbers in today. Um, so. Uh, not investment advice, subscribe and stuff. And I don't have a playlist for this, I don't think. This will just be a normal video. But um, yeah, happy trading.